master's award in 2020. I finished it by the old program. I was uh, visiting Toastmaster headquarters in Colorado in then uh, nearby Denver in 2019. And this is from a photo from headquarters. But actually, um, if you go there, they provide you a tour around the facility. And it's a very nice facility. Um, the one surprising fact about Toastmaster headquarters is by have a decent amount of size of building, but the shipment room is actually very, very small and I can say tiny. So if you have problem with the shipment, I think that's one of the reasons because it's, it's the room is so small. Also, I visited uh, Toastmasters convention in 2018, uh, which was in Chicago, in Illinois. And yeah, I visit, uh, I watched um, the 10 finalists of public speaking uh, championship in 2018. And I actually have thought of the three uh, winners, uh, but I didn't do good at here. And before that, I was president in uh, Stanatos Masters Club in 2017-18. And the fun fact about me, I never won a club contest. I was um, second place winner, third place winner, but never won a club contest. So I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm not an expert. Uh, now, so let's talk about the occasions. The big topic of uh, impromptu speech is occasions. And it's not about only table topic sessions, right? In Toastmasters, um, we can give it anywhere in conferences, toasts, meetings, discussions, contests, arguments, and you can use it as pickup lines, whatever. So this is uh, like useful skills in every occasion, I think. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because I wanted to be better in that. And I did some research how to become better in terms of being better in proper speaker. Um, in generally, this helps when you, especially outside of the country and you talk to people. Um, this skill usually uh, is very important to have and to polish it. Um, that can um, make your conversations a little bit uh, more entertaining, more interesting. Um, so that's the reason to practice. And I believe most of you uh, already know that because there are a lot of people registered here. Um, so this is the occasions. If you know any other occasions, you can write in the chat and maybe um, we will talk about it later during the q a session so this is regarding the occasions and if you have questions before we move on i would love to answer some questions does anyone have questions everyone good no questions okay let's go further so regarding our uh, contest rules and Toastmasters table topic session rules. Um, you probably already know that time limit is one to two minutes, where a minimum is one minute. And when you do the word speech and you answer less than one minute, usually not qualified to be voted. Um, and I think it's the same in contest, contest rules. Um, you also have a maximum limit of two minutes, but you have 30 minutes of grace period when you deliver your answer. So this is added to maximum of your um, time limit. Uh, but I do not advise to overuse it. As soon as you see red card, try to finish your speech uh, and conclude it in a more like faster way. Uh, also some rules, the general rules that all contestants must receive the same topic, which must be of general nature. This is regarding the contest. Uh, the topic is selected by the contest chair. Uh, the topic must be of reasonable length, must not require detailed knowledge, and must lead to an opinion or conclusion. Uh, contestants will receive no advanced knowledge of the topic until the moment they introduce to the contest chair. Yes, contestants, you probably read that. Um, one particular thing I want to mention here is that you should be respectful in um, talking incentive topics like political, sexual, religion and other such sensitive to people topics because people 
uh, feelings can be hurt. Uh, just um, take that in mind that you should not, um, you should be a little bit more uh, careful about this type of subjects. Uh, but if you are respectful to others, I think you will have no problem with, uh, with that. And yeah, I need a volunteer now. Let's, let's do the fun part. We'll do one exercise. Okay, Zulfikar, I knew you volunteer. <laughs> okay, uh, so the question for you, would you rather be a warrior genius or a joyful simpleton? I would be a joyful genius because worried is beyond me. I don't know what worry is. Every day, my wife puts me through worry. So I have remembered not to remember what worry is. And why should I be a simpleton? My knowledge is to share. Because if I don't share my knowledge, then everybody becomes an expert and instructs me. So I want to be the genius and instruct everybody. And hence, joyful genius is what I'm going to be. You all need to be the worried and simpletons. Back okay. to you. Thank you. That's a great speech. That's a great structure. And that's a good answer. Uh, very good. I see Praga. Am I pronouncing it right? Raising yes. hands. Okay. Yes, you have few of those who are pronouncing it right. Okay. Right. Uh, you, you raise your hand. You want to answer? Yeah, can I answer the same question? Um, yeah, let's do this. We are trying to exercise. So. Okay, if you want to give me another question, I'm fine with it. No, uh, let's try this one. And actually, it will be good for next exercise. So. That's okay. Kind of very interesting. If you have to, if you have to answer. Great. What a genius or a joyful simpleton? Why do I even need to decide? For a person like me, I would be a genius simpleton. The best part about being genius is that you know what being simple also means. That's one of the most important qualities of being a genius. So for me, I would never need to choose between the two. I would rather amalgamate the two and become a person who can use his or her genius to do simple things in life, to make people happy, to uplift them, to make them better and use my genius for the betterment of everybody else. That will make me simple and lovable too. And I really hope you will also choose a mixture of two of these. Neither one will make you better. Over to you. Okay, that's a great answer, actually. I think I was not the one who should deliver this masterclass. Um, thank you for that. And now uh, let's think about, uh, if you don't mind, we will uh, talk a little bit more about your answers in terms of what usually those masters do is try to relate and think about um, firstly, what went well in these two answers. And actually very, um, uh, I, I was very impressed with the answers and I, I have something to actually jot down to myself and try to use it next time regarding the structure. So anyone want to volunteer what they particularly like in the answers? Don't be shy. What did you like about answers? Uh, they were very creative, okay. in my opinion. Very creative. Yeah, uh, they both uh, combined the answer, uh, which like was not in the question of that, uh, but you could combine these two answers, uh, two questions together. Like either choosing, you could just uh, mix them and create the, the new answer, which was what absolutely astonishing and great. I didn't think about it because when I see, oh, I, I usually try to go with one uh, side, but never did like think about combining them. That was great. Yeah, um, Sofikar, you want to answer? Uh, your microphone is muted. You know, what I find is generally whenever there is a table topic presented, 
the tendency is to answer the question. Yeah. And there are others who will go negate to the question. Yeah. There are the best way I find answering a table topic is to go where nobody goes because yeah. that gives a unique uh, perspective to the question. And that's why I like to, I mean, and that's where my mind generally falls in always to okay. twist the question rather than twist the answer. And uh, that is what I find is good. But mind you, the judging has to be of a certain quality. If the judging is not, uh, if it's a contest, and if you are in front of judges, the judges might tend to be very conservative. And if okay. the judges are con conservative, you have no way that you are going to win because you have not answered the question. It so, becomes a prime thing important. So be careful about that. But having said that, if it's a it's a good uh, you know arrangement and the good judges are there. You uh, any type of topic because finally in table topics what we have uh, sort of practiced over the years is table topics is something that should make you talk that should make your ideas flow it is not something that you have to answer a question the question is the last part of the answer that's a good that's a great insight actually especially the last one that. Uh, the question is the last part of the answer. And yeah, I uh, did particularly like about the comments regarding the judges. Yeah, judges can be conservative. So that's also one thing you should take in mind when you're answering. And I see uh, two hands, and I think um, we'll start from Dinara and then we'll switch to Praga. So Dinara, uh, what uh, is your Thank you. Yeah, I actually like both uh, speech today. And uh, I think that the answers were really um, creative and extraordinary because there was a question, but uh, the people who answered, they tried to like give their own kind of answer. And as well, I think um, I, I, what I like about the speech uh, that it was really positive one uh, and even sometimes funny. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what I really like. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Pragya, uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right. If I'm not sorry. Yeah. Okay. So um, I would just want to add two points, which I learned recently before my division contest uh, for my district. Um, that education said, uh, the education session said clearly two things. Firstly, was that when you're given a topic, we always talk about that a table topic should be a mini speech, right? It should have an opening body and yep. a closing, and there should be a message to it. But the great part about table topics is that the message is already given to us in that topic. What we need to do is to weave around the story that leads us to that message. So that is a great part of table topics. We just need to weave around that story, keeping opening body and closing in mind. Uh, another thing is that uh, in my division contest, I got the same kind of uh, a topic, which asked me that whether you would select a a storm stuck sea or a calm sea, which is the one which you prefer in your life, a storm sea or a calm sea. So there, uh, my answer, which, which made me win was a central answer. But when you give a central answer that I prefer both, you need to have a great conviction to show both the sides are important. So now, you know, if I tell what, what this calm sea teaches me, it, it teaches me patience. It, it teaches me that the time will change and things will calm down. And similarly, a storm sea teaches you that there'll be struggles in your life, but you need to stand strong, like bold ship over there. So this is the format which uh, really works if you have to take a midway. I am one person who mostly, mostly tries to uh, find a midway and have a conviction clear to inform why both the signs are important. So if you have that, you can take both sides. If not, then better always go for one side, which you have a strong conviction for. That is something which I learned. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually very great insight. Uh, I particularly like that you talk about the message given in, a, in this question of the table topic. Um, that's, I never thought about it actually by myself. So that's, that's, uh, that's a great insight to hear. Uh, I wanted to add that what I particularly liked in both of your answers was particularly strong, very strong conclusion, um, because you 
not just deliver the answer to us, but they also um, give us conclusion, which was very tightly like connected to your speech given previously and was strong and powerful in like delivering your message. And I think you also used a little bit of pause be before you jump to conclusion, which was, was really good in terms of we know that you're finishing and now there is something coming like uh, the final version of your answer, which was um, quite helpful to remember your answer. That was very well done. And I think uh, you both are brilliant table topic speakers. So I'm actually uh, thinking this contest will be tough. Okay, um, then another part of the questions, uh, what could be done better if you think about uh, that particular to answers? And I think Zulfikar mentioned that um, he said that if the judges are conservative, you should take a man that um, like middle ground will not may not work. So this is one can be one of the things that I think could be done like better. But I I don't mind. Uh, I think like it's worth risking, right? Uh, uh, I know you can like the judges may not like it, but they may like it. So it's risk, and I think it's worth it. I would, I would go for it if I would deliver the answer as you, I would go for it. So anyone else uh, have some thoughts about what could be done better in the speeches, answers? And I am, yes, actually, I wanted to ask Zulfikar and Praga again because they delivered the speech and I, I want to hear what they want to improve in, in their speeches. You know, actually, uh, with this particular spe uh, topic, I don't have a, a different way uh, which I can think of offhand. But actually, what Pragya went uh, and uh, talked about uh, the topic that she got in her the calm sea and the stormy sea. You know uh, that topic. I would love to take it in a different way. Totally, I would say today's topic tells me about what kind of a girl. I would want in my life. <laughs> Should it be a stormy girl or a calm girl? Hey, I don't want a calm girl all the time. A little bit of storm adds to the flavor in the tea. So listen, man, let the sea be a little stormy and calm. Meaning, I'm, all I'm saying is there is always another way to look at it. See, always, also you have to remember the topic came and you have barely five to eight, ten seconds to jump on a topic. So whatever you jump on, take the first ten seconds to get your mind straight while you are talking just random in introductions and all that. And take your mind into the topic and then come up with an answer. This is what I think works because you don't have the time to, you know, really think about everything because where is the time? You have to answer. It's an impromptu question and you have to come at it. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, that's um, your creative, uh, your creativity skills is actually uh, beyond depressive. Uh, um, I, I'm like, I, I, that's that's approach to answer calm storming sea is, 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 is brilliant. It's just brilliant. And I also sideway to our next topic, which I think we will start about uh, that we don't have time when we answer the topic session. Uh, and that's probably the main struggle we do. Oh, sorry. Uh, we do have, and um, there are some techniques which will help you to overcome it. And we'll probably talk about that. Uh, but yeah. Um, I was joking that this will be the end and thank you, but I, I, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not important now. Um, so um, to this, uh, to get the answer straightforwardly without like thinking too much about, there are some structures which will help you. And some they call them techniques, some frameworks, and I usually mostly adapted it from frameworks. And we'll start from the first one. Uh, which is uh, PrEP. It's actually official, not official. It's one of the frameworks which on uh, Toastmasters official YouTube channel about the impromptu speaking. Uh, there is a video and it will be an external resource. You can watch it. 
So what they actually proposed is to use one of this type of frameworks. When you deliver the, your point, the, you know, the view of your like subject, uh, the point view, and then you give the reason for that. Then you give one example, and then you provide uh, the like conclusion point. So, um, for example, if we talk, what's the questions here? Um, if you go to, back in time, which moment of your life would go, would you go and why? If I deliver in a point, example point, reason, example point structure, I would probably go, um, uh, if we start from point, I would go to most memorable and pleasurable time of my life when I was around 20 years old. And um, the reason for that is because I was, it was my first time traveling abroad. I traveled to Moscow to international competition. And uh, it was one of the highlights of my swimming career as well. So I, uh, my best swimming time was actually there. Uh, and it was a very happy life because it was a tremendous event. It's like mini Olympic games for uh, youngsters. Um, it's just full of joy and uh, a lot of fun activities, especially when you're 20, um, with some stupid activities as well. So that was like the brilliance and, um, of 20s uh, emphasized in a trip abroad with your friends. Um, that was probably one of the best memories in my life. So that's why I want to go back in that time and repeat it. So this is like the point of the end I'm going for. And this is like just straightforward answer from the structure without deep thinking about that. Um, but um, let's practice. Uh, I need another volunteer uh, who didn't do answer it yet. And he can choose the rest two of questions to answer. Any volunteer who wants to go? And you have a structure to use, just try to use it. Uh, point, reason, example, and point. Anyone? Guys, should I implement those master rules? If no one wants, I will pick anyone I want. Uh -huh. I am Sarika from India. Yeah. Hi. Uh, can I go? Can uh, I volunteer? Yeah, 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 Sarika, go, go ahead. Oh, okay, before volunteering, I just logged in now because I had net issues. I'm supposed to pick up one of these and uh, speak yeah. in the matter of point, reason, example, point, right? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect, actually. You, you got it. All right. Yeah, perfect. All right. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and my dear friends. If I could go back in time, which moment of my life would I go and why? If I were to go back in time, I would go back to my 11th and 12th class. There is a very simple reason for it. Spending 20 years in an academic field, I have realized that I did not explore my potential when I was growing up, when I was challenging my um, energies as a teenager. I kind of wasted my time and energies on unnecessary things, unnecessary emotions, and things which didn't matter to me in the next five years. If I were given an opportunity to go back in time, I would want to go back to my intermediate, in, which, is inter, like, which is 11th and 12th abroad, and learn a musical instrument, sit and channelize my inner energies towards something which is positive, so that when I'm turning 40, I wouldn't have to be a very frustrated female, rather a very positive and a very vibrant kind of a being. I would have wanted to do this because I would be passing the same to my kids. So yes, if I had to go back in time, I would have chosen the year, my, my age 16 and 17. Thank you so much, Kaha. Thank you, uh, thank you. That's actually was like, you wrote the script and you're reading it, it's, it's you, you just nailed it. And uh, you particularly use the structure, which was really good. So very impressive. Um, yeah, I think you actually made it better than even me. Um, Thank you. 
So um, we have two other questions. Do we have any other volunteers? I would probably volunteer to go with, what would you not give up for 1 million in cash? Um, let's ask my mentee. Karina, I'm picking you up. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm I would be, I would pick the second question. How would you describe freedom in your own words? Uh, for me, freedom is the is a situation when you um, use your rights and uh, your essential human rights, and that will um, that will not contradict with the rights of other person and. Um, And that's it. Okay. Uh, but if you think about the structure, you have like point, reason, mm -hmm. example, and point. So you say yeah. the point, you say the reason, but what would be example? And I know your speeches, uh, you have examples, you have a plenty of examples of that when the freedom was mattered to you, your story with the American visa will go all the way. That you can put it anywhere. And in this particular answer, that will be a great example of the freedom that you had the freedom to to challenge the visa decision, visa rejection, and you did, and you won. So this is like, uh, you know, one of the examples that you can use this structure with. And I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of other examples. Um, so um, what I'm trying to say when you uh, answer in this, uh, if the first thing come to mind as an example, uh, that would be great. Uh, but I think the challenging part here is actually this example itself. Uh, because if you have it in your mind, that's great. You just adopt the, you just give a point, reason, example, and then the point. Uh, the challenging part, if you don't have example, um, you have to come up and you're given answer, like you're providing point, reason, and you think what example in your life, or maybe some other life, would be good fit for this question. Um, so you can adapt anything. And it doesn't mean it could be perfect. Um, but with this structure, uh, it will be less, not even less noticeable, but it will be uh, even uh, if I don't know you, I will probably, and you think example is not accurate. If you adapt it at least uh, like partially correct, this, the, the answer will be more like the number of more memorable, memorable. I lost that. More memorable, and that will help you to um, leave better expression. So, um, that's um, example here will be good, uh, and I think Karina, um, we will work on that if you want. So, can I try? Yep, of course. And Angela, Lee, uh, Angela Lee, I would like to choose uh, topic number two. How would you describe freedom in your own words? I think freedom is very important to human beings, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. So in my country, that means in Hong Kong, we will have some uh, cases which will restrict our freedom. That is a mandatory isolation in the in the camp but that means we can't have freedom we can't go out of the camp for 21 days which is a very terrible experience to uh, the hong kong citizens i think freedom is very important in our life because we enjoy freedom of speech freedom of movement and freedom of assembly so we can do everything freely in Hong Kong but during the pandemic uh, situation we are restricted to go out to eat freely because uh, we can't uh, you know sit together uh, existing uh, for four people or sometimes two people and now it is uh, uh, better uh, six people if you have uh, some in uh, vaccinated nations so i think uh for me 
uh, freedom is very important in my life, especially in the table topic session. We can speak freely. You can speak whatever we want to speak. So this is a very uh, good experience for me because we can express whatever we want to say freely. This is very important for us. So I would like to suggest that if we have freedom, that means we have a very uh, meaningful uh, experience in our life. So I hope that freedom will uh, benefit all. And I hope that the pandemic uh, COVID-19 will go away uh, from my country very soon so that we can have freedom again in our country. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it was a very relevant topic. Um, we all have some restrictions because of pandemic, and I think we all experience that the taste of the freedom, the the price of the freedom we pay when we didn't have a pandemic, um, or we didn't pay. So it's a, it's actually very, um, very actually uh, like very related to us. I think. And I think one of the reasons why I did the vaccine as, fa as fast as I can is was the reason that I want to have experienced the same freedom. And for me, one of the freedoms is freedom to travel. I wanted to travel, I wanted to travel more and I want to travel around the world. So it was just like unbearable for me sitting almost a year in one city. Uh, it's just like unimaginable. But anyway, yeah, this is the situation we had. This is the life we live in. Um, Dinara, you wanted to answer your questions, and I think that will be one million in cash. Okay, uh, I want to answer the second question as well. I want to share my ideas, my uh, opinion uh, related to this topic. Um, actually, when we talk about freedom, I'm thinking about not those uh, outside conditions uh, that kind of restrict our freedom, but I am thinking about the inside world of a person. And uh, I think in my opinion, freedom, this def I can define freedom as a freedom of your own choice. Uh, something like, for example, if you want to, uh, if you have a dream and you want to um, realize this dream, you need to pursue your dreams. Uh, so what do I mean by this? Uh, for example, uh, in our world, we have a lot of um, expectations from other people, or we have some prejudice or something like this. But uh, and this uh, actually restrict our own um, our own like wishes and and dreams. And uh, as an example, I want to talk about my little sister. Uh, she um, completed her um, education background. Uh, her educational background is related to economics, and she was a very good economist uh, working in Kazakhstani company. But uh, then she realized one day that actually she wanted to um, like uh, to relate her life to the um, cinematography, and she uh, started uh, a new another bachelor's uh, degree for five years. Uh, in the cinematography field. And uh, our family, of course, had a lot of expectations on her to be a great economist. And uh, a lot of people had a lot of prejudice, like in your age, why are you doing another bachelor's again? But uh, she, uh, nevertheless, uh, despite any of this um, uh, life circumstances, any of this uh, people's opinion, she uh, did her bachelor's and now she's a very good, um, uh, film director. So uh, what I want to say, uh, freedom, in my opinion, it's my more philosophical uh, concept rather than uh, this um, that we were talking before. It's more uh, something that comes in inside. If you have uh, freedom inside you, then um, nothing outside can dictate uh, your life. That's all. Okay, thank you. That is almost a speech. Um, Praga, I, I see your hands up. Uh, you want to go with the third question or? Yes, the third question. That's quite okay, interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, it'll be final answer and we will move on. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yes. So I would say that this is a huge amount for anybody to leave anything for this much of an amount. But if I think deep, there are two things which I would never leave, even if I get this. First thing is my character because I have spent an age to build it. It is something which defines me. It is something which explains who I am. 
And that is something that I would not change for whatever amount I get. But the second important thing, which I would never change is my husband. Come on, I spent 11 years training him, making him understand what I need without even telling and making him do the house chores. How can I spend that much of time and waste so much of energy on somebody else? So that is one another important thing for me, which I would never leave for whatever amount you say. 11 years is a really, really long time. Plus the best part is that he knows my character too. He knows when I'm grumpy. He knows when I'm shouting. He knows when I'm happy and he respects who I am. So I now hope you understand that whatever amount I get, I know it will be a big loss, but not a bigger loss than having a trained husband with you with whom you've spent 11 years. Over to you, Kaha. Okay, uh, that's that's very um, great answer. And um, this is brilliant. And actually you provided two examples and answer. And I think you follow the structure um, brilliantly done. Um, um, yeah, I think your husband very, very lucky to have you. Uh, okay, next. Um, this is another technique which is um, pretty like easy, uh, but it's at the same time, it's easy to remember, but it's very hard. So we, start, we started with such question like, would you rather do that or do that? Uh, like, would you have just the last question was also uh, kind of that type of question. Um, and the easiest approach here is to start some, some introduction about maybe your position you're taking, or maybe the things that you're considering before making decision. When you talk about the pros and cons of that decision, conclusion. But here is a trick. If you're not experienced speaker, um, it's easy to, um, to go deep in pros and cons and forgot what, what is actually your actual decision would be. And where are you using the the audi uh, audience, um, what side you're taking, because sometimes you're not conveying it when you do pros and cons. And it's uh, actually typical, especially in our club, I know. And I think I'm one of one of the people who is guilty of that. Um, so I'll provide example just to show you. Um, would you rather lose all of your mem old memories or never be able to make new ones? Um, and usually people, um, like I could answer uh, something like, I would, I would take a stand. I would probably lose uh, all the memories because uh, I think the pros of that, that you forget about some of um, very shameful situation you have been in. Of course, cons of that, you um, forget some people you find very dear to your heart. Um, but if you make new ones, you can uh, recreate that again and you lose that bad memories you do have. Uh, so pros of cons on that decision would be something like that. And if I leave this at this point, uh, which some uh, like Toastmasters uh, sometimes do, you left with not particular the conclusion, like, yes, I did choose new ones, and I provide pros and cons, but there is no conclusion, not the strong, like the flow. It started well, it start, provided some pros and cons for losing old memories and jump uh, straightforwardly jump to new ones, uh, did some explanation of new ones and, and then there was no like conclusion. If I just added like, I would definitely go with new ones, especially after like waiting pros and cons, um, just adding that simple uh, sentence would change it, but I didn't add it at the end. So this is like the, the trap here, the pros vs cons. Uh, sometimes you go too deep into that and you forgot uh, that there is a flow of your speech that should have, as we talked in the beginning, introduction, body and conclusion. And especially in table topic, if you have the conclusion, this is very strong because the things uh, that people will remember is your story. And if you give it a conclusion, it'll probably vote for you at the end of the topic session. Uh, as a winner. So that's that's a distinct definition between like good answer and very good, very good answer. So uh, let's practice. 
May I ask a question? Yep, Before, sure. Go ahead. I, I would like to, uh, I, I just want to, uh, you uh, explain the flow. Yeah. What do you mean by flow? Is it you have to include the opening body conclusion or what is the meaning of flow at the end after the conclusion? Yeah. Uh, the, the flow here, I actually think this is not the right uh, word I used, but what I'm referring to is that sometimes when you go with pros and cons, you forgot what you, the particular, your first stand was. Like you said in the production, I would go with losing all memories one, and you say the pros and cons, and then there is no conclusion like um, the speech was suddenly became about pros and cons, not about your choice. So this is you're losing the flow, you're losing control of the thoughts, like from the beginning to the end. That's what I'm referring to. So uh, if you watch the previous answers, most of them had like between the beginning, the body, and a definite conclusion. So they all aligned. Um, but here, this is easy uh, to forget that was the flaw. What does your stand for? Oh, okay. uh, sometimes, especially because it's impromptu speak, uh, speech, you can uh, like go deep in pros and cons. And if you stand beginning with the pros, you can by the end switch to the cons and you convince yourself that cons is actually better. So you can like go the different direction. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to refer to here as flow that you should remember that your first stand was mm. and try to conclude with that first stand emphasizing, not mm -hmm. switching during the speech. That's probably that the flow. Am thank I explaining it correctly? Okay, thank you. Okay. Is it clear? Uh, no, no. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll practice and maybe you'll see that I'm referring to you. This is hard to explain to me too. So, uh, but I just remember that when I answered a lot of such type of speeches with pros and cons, I sometimes convince myself from pros to cons. And at the end, I was like kind of switching to the opposite side of my answer. And I was like, uh, I'm going in the wrong direction. So in that wrong direction uh, was referred as a flaw. Okay, um, practice, practice, practice. Uh, who wants to go and volunteer? Okay. Go with the you same want... question. Uh, you you want to go with the same question? Yeah. Uh, okay. To practice, I feel with this question more confident. Okay. So, when do you feel? When do you ask yourself this question? I would assume that most of people would the first thing to do would think of their age. For example, I'm almost at my twenties, and the most reasonable decision would be to lose all my old memories to make new ones. Of course, the cons of those uh, that decision is you lose all memories with your best friends, with your family, um, with the people you know, when you spend so much time building that foundation of your life with those people and you lose all that. However, I still have at least uh, 60 maybe years in after from this time to live and so many memories can be made with the same people I know. If those people are genuine, they will work their heart. They will go all their way to work hard to make memories with my with me, to make more memories and to build another foundation of my life, which will even bond us together. Also, uh, learning things I like, for example. The thing I like is medicine. Studying it for the second time will be only a pleasure for me because I really like this field. Um, that's why I would probably choose to go with uh, losing my old memories to make new ones. Good, um, brilliant. Uh, yeah, use the structure and actually you uh, convinced me. And actually, I was thinking you would go with like old memories. But uh, it's a good, um, very good try. And very good answer. So impressive. Um, okay, anyone else want to volunteer to the next two questions? Taha, can I go next, Sarika? Yep, Sarika, go ahead. Okay, I would want to choose the topic. Would you rather have one million one million dollars in cash or a spouse worth one million dollars? Now, 
you have to understand what kind of a girl I am to understand the answer I'm trying to choose. I have been a spendthrift all my life. If I had money, I never ever invested it. I am an impulsive shopper. So these are the reasons I would not want to have $1 million in cash because I know before I blink, I will run out of cash. On the other hand, if you meet my husband of 18 years, you will understand he has an extremely thorough knowledge of investments, stocks, and what to do basically with so much money. Now, if I would have had a spouse who is basically worth $1 million, I know I would be a millionaire for the rest of my life. So if given a choice, I would want my husband to have $1 million rather than me having it in cash and spending it before I even say, oh my God, <laughs> over to Kaha. Well, yeah, brilliant. And um, I particularly like how you played with pros and cons. You said the pros about uh, having one million in cash and the cons of it and um, the pros of having a spouse worth one million dollar, which was great. Um, uh, thank you, thank you for that. Um, and um, I'm actually learning a lot today. Um, we have any, do we have any volunteer to the second question? Would you prefer to live in the mountains? I, I try. Uh, the second question, would you prefer to live in the mountain or nearby sea or why? Uh, I think uh, in front of us, there are choices for us because we can live in the mountain or nearby sea. I think there are pros and cons for those two places if you want prefer to live there. For example, in the mountain, we can breathe the fresh air and also we can uh, walk near the nature and we can uh, walk in the top of the mountain to have a better view and and enjoy the hiking and walking uh, in the mountain and in the sea we have a lot of uh, sea beaches in hong kong and we can also have a swimming and sun bath and we can also enjoy the fresh air so both have pros and cons for these two places but if i have a choice i would like to live sometimes in the mountain and sometimes near the sea so that i have both the pros uh, pros and and uh, for living these two places i think um, uh, i can also have um, vitamin d uh, because of the sun that will give me healthy life and mountains when i have uh, time uh, to hide then i can have more uh, energy and uh, enjoy the flowers and the trees of in the mountain and in conclusion if I have a choice I would like to live in the mountain as well as the nearby sea so that I can enjoy the both advantage of it so uh, ladies and gentlemen and come to Hong Kong and I will show you the mountain the beautiful mountain in Hong Kong and also the lovely beaches in Hong Kong too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Angela. Uh, that was very interesting. Uh, Kaha, I uh, have one question. question. Uh, just one second. Um, I don't see who was asking, but I want to ask Angela. Uh, I'm not particularly sure. Do you have uh, like a lot of mountains in Hong Kong? I beg your pardon? Uh, do you have a lot of mountains in Hong Kong? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we have the peak, you know, and yeah. when the tourists come to Hong Kong, we would lead them to the peak and we can walk from the central of the Hong Kong up to the peak. And during this walking, we can enjoy uh, the nature and the trees and the flowers up to the peak and we can have uh, some dim sum over there too. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, you're already living in the green. You have the sea nearby and you have mountains nearby. So that's like perfect. Um, very lucky. Okay, um, I think uh, who was volunteering in Praga? Is that you? I, uh, it was Sarika. I was about to ask you. Okay, okay. Uh, in, 
if we have a table topic speech like this wherein we have pros and cons is it mandatory for us to reach a conclusion or like how angela did we can say i would prefer both um are you asking me sorry yeah yeah i'm actually asking you in a question like this when we where we have a pros versus cons question mm -hmm. as a table topic speaker do we need to arrive at a conclusion or we can say that i would prefer mountains and see both um yeah but we have like two minutes so i mean you need to feel it i, I think you're very good on that um but i think that it, from my perspective, when I hear uh, of answers and I did my own answer delivers, I usually try to um, conclude it because without conclusion, it seemed abrupt and there is no like um, strong point in it delivering the answer. So like the essence of the answer, the meat, uh, you had the meat, but it's like highlight of your answer will happen in the conclusion. So I would prefer to have a conclusion it may be like combination of both, like that, like you say, uh, mountains that have a sea boat. That's perfect. Um, but I mean, like you should have it. It's better to have it. It okay. makes the speech very strong. Um, otherwise, it could be strong, but it has like lack of something, and that lack of something is like is, is left with like an answered feeling. And that's usually not perceived well with the audience. That's that's the only one reason I wanted to have a conclusion. And if you if you uh, try to look at the answers given with pros and cons, and you see if there is no conclusion, or like combination of your speech, uh, the not combination like the, the conclusion of the speech delivered, it usually feels abrupt. Feels like it haven't it hasn't finished. So that's the only one reason I advise to have a conclusion. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, um, we will go next and people who have not delivered answers yet, I will count to you. Okay, this is another um, popular framework, which is called 5W, and, and it's very useful. It's very easy. You just to remember like the answer. You, 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 you have the questions and you just straightforwardly think who was involved in that situation you have in mind for this answer. What was circumstances um, of that memory, where it had happened, uh, when it occurred and why uh, everyone was there. And that can give you like the, the meat for the answer. And you just add some thoughts about like, you want to deliver, what is your message? And as we discovered earlier, with help of our participants that the message is usually in the, uh, in the question. So you can use that as a message and just give example with who, what, where, when, and why. And you're good to go. And just one um, example on top of my head. And I would go with, um, uh, if you could meet anyone, actually I answered this question yesterday and other one. Okay, it will be first question again. What is the on, one thing you would most like to change about the world? Uh, and my answer will be, one thing I will change in, my, uh, in the world, um, and actually first thing come to my mind is, was me, but when I think about this particular framework, I probably cannot adapt it, but I will try. Um, this is um, the thing I would want to change in, about the world, would be me because I want to be uh, much better in being social active, uh, helpful to others, uh, earn more money, uh, be probably another Jeff Bezos. I really admire him. He built an empire and he helped people uh, live better life in my opinion. Um, I would also love to be uh, in a more warmer place than I'm currently in, like something like Florida, Miami, or Hong Kong, as our people live in. Ah, Australia is actually sounds very nice, very warm. So, um, and I would love to live in this particular time. 
um, because uh, I think this time is very amazing. We have so much technology advancement and it's so much easier to live and travel. Uh, but I would probably choose this time to live in um, above anyone else. And one of the interesting things about that technology change and what's happening right now is actually we're in the middle of the change. And after sometimes um, people will think about us like we think today about industrial revolution or something like that. So that's the reason why I would go with uh, changing me, being in more warmer country uh, at this particular time and probably doing something um, very responsible and probably which makes me rich. So that will be my answer using this structure. And you see, despite this is, was not particular the good answer for, in terms of like changing me, I still adapted to this framework. So this framework helped me because without these five we, I would probably change, uh, I would probably change my answer to something like, I would change myself in terms of that and that and that and that and that and that. Um, but with this five B approach, five W approach, I actually made it more like in a different way uh, it was a little bit, maybe not so well structured, um, but still uh, the conclusion, uh, I think I, I bind it together in the conclusion. So that's like my takeaway, my evolution of my speech. You may be into something else and that's good. Um, yeah, Dinara, you have a question? No, I wanted to volunteer. Okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Pick your question and just go ahead. Uh, okay, so I want to answer the first question as well. Mm, so um, what is the um, one thing you would most like to change about the world? Actually, um, I am thinking about um, opening my um, language school, uh, but it will be a kind of charity school uh, where uh, I can teach uh, English to students uh, from um, big families or from the families with low income uh, and um, my uh, like uh, and this um, I think this kind of school can help the students uh, kind of giving them access to uh, education I mean international one because uh, not a lot not all uh, kind not all students uh, from low income or big families uh, can have this uh, opportunity or possibility uh, to study, uh, to learn English, uh, like to have private lessons or something like this. And their parents, they don't have uh, enough um, budget to support this, their children. That's why I want to open a charity school where the students uh, can get free access. But uh, in my case, uh, maybe I can get some uh, sponsorship from investors or somebody. And I think this uh, will, um, the school will be opened uh, in um, Kazakhstan and it will involve students, uh, especially from village schools, because I am actually a teacher of a village school and I know the situation there. Uh, and I, I'm thinking about opening my school in the very nearest future. Um, so it is this year, I hope. Um, uh, and um, so I think that, uh, so why I want to change the situation, uh, as I uh, already said, as I mentioned, I want to, um, to give, uh, maybe to give a chance to give an opportunity for village uh, students uh, from low income and uh, big families uh, to get an access to the bigger world. So this is my answer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think you covered all the topics here uh, with 5W. Um, so we didn't hear Anu yet, Dana, Milan, Melanie. Uh, you said you cannot talk right now, but we hope you will eventually join us. And uh, Lezat, Azamat, I know you haven't answered yet. Do you want to volunteer for any question? I'm not picking you yet, but we would love to hear your answers. 
This is the good time to practice. Anu, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. I'd like to go. Great. Yeah, uh, I'd like to choose the third question. If you could take a single uh, photograph of your life, what would it look like? Well, I currently have two daughters who are six and seven years old. And I'm also pregnant right now <laughs> with my third child. And if I could take a single photograph of my life, it would probably be um, after 20 years with my three grown children, all happy, uh, healthy, and successful, along with my husband, my parents, who would probably be around 80 to 90 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have a very long and uh, happy, prosperous life uh, with my family. That is uh, how I uh, envision uh, happiness and the uh, goal in life. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's very impressive. Uh, well, I I think we will see that photo, and that will be one of the covers for magazine I, I just envision it uh, you can just actually send it to those masters as well they publish it uh, and we'll all see that your dreams come true so uh, really help me for that uh, to see that um, okay um, we didn't answer for this one if you could meet anyone in the world who would you choose to meet and why uh, here Oh, yes, uh, I would like to try to answer this question. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Um, if I could meet anyone in the world, and since this question fits the 5W framework, and one of the question is when, then I can choose when I can meet that person. That's why I would choose to meet that person 60 years later, around that time. And you probably already guessed it would be me. I would like to meet myself 60 years later. You might think that's cheating and I wouldn't disagree with you because that is cheating on life. Um, I would, it doesn't matter where I would meet myself because um, when I, wherever I would be 60 years later, I'm sure I would enjoy that. And I would probably discuss everything I could have a question on, uh, including my daily struggles, including some uh, mental health issues that we all live through daily that I personally care about will there will they be ever resolved and I would like to know that how my life turned out and maybe to give myself a company with a person who actually understands myself because that's uh, towards the last part of my life I would feel that would be the most precious experience in my life to meet someone who actually understands myself that's, that will be all thank you thank that's you. that's very great answer i didn't think about meeting myself so and if i meet myself in like my 90 years old myself i would probably ask just one question um one question and will be what to invest in uh, yeah i need to take care about that now <laughs> Um, okay, thank you for your answers. And let's go ahead. And I think we have, yeah, last framework for today. Uh, it's called Star. Uh, it's actually, is it me? I'm sorry. I don't know. This, this is um, no, it's not me. What? You all hear that weird sound? Yes. Mm. I see Yulia has her mic on. Other people have it turned off.
Your mic is muted. Sorry for that. Um, so there is a STAR business framework. Um, it's from business world. It's adapted a little bit. But it's actually very good to quick answer. And it's very good for like business gear questions type. Um, so it starts from situation, when and where. You describe just the situation. You just have attention, like what's happening, what's the problem. Then you say a few words about the action, what should be have be done or like be done or done to avoid it or solve it. And he will talk about the result at the end, the expected result or the impact of the result. And um, it's not always useful in Toastmasters. We tried that yesterday actually. And it's not always good to other type of questions. Um, but you still can adapt it. Uh, you sound more professional with type of the answer in the framework, especially given in the prompt, it helps uh, to make you sound more, uh, to make sound you more like prepared. That's that's the word I was looking for. So in one of the examples, if you had the opportunity to get a message across to a large group, no, I want to go with the final one. What is the one thing you would most like to change about the world? No answer previously. If you had the opportunity to get the message across to a large group of people, what your message would be? Um, I don't know. Um, just let me give. Um, yeah. Um, so it will be, for example, a situation which I had a few years ago during my interview um, that if I had a team and suddenly the very, very, very bad thing happened and we have to resolve it very quickly. Um, and the, the all like situation uh, resolving depends on me. Um, I would probably um, try to say that or to convey that we have a problem and the problem is very, very big and crucial for our company and our team. And we tr we need to try to solve it as much as fast as we can. And um, reasoning is obvious. We all make money. Uh, we all make money from it. So we all paid for that. And unfortunately, uh, some of um, problems occurred, uh, not particularly from our fault, uh, but still we need to resolve it. And I propose um, next steps. First, we need to identify the core of the problem as, as fast as we can. And I devote to like people for that, uh, our most senior. And then second, I would probably uh, prepare some message to our customers or clients who have suffered from that actions and convey them what we are doing, uh, everything we can to solve it. And actually I will probably uh, send this plan to them in order to uh, show them what we are what we're actually doing uh, the third uh we'll probably ask our senior teams and seniors um to help us with the support and all resources we needed uh and if you need anything just tell me and uh, um i hope we will solve this problem in two hours uh, uh, reasonably, and if you don't think we can solve it in two hours, just tell me that. And as a result, I think we can either extend it or acquire new additional resources. Uh, so this is like type of the answer I'm giving, particularly like straightforwardly, um, because I just like adapting it uh, from the business from. And even in my answer, you see that it's like business geared. Like this is situation. This is the problem. This is what we need to do, and this is the solution or result we are expecting. So um, I think it can be still adapted to uh, to Toastmasters, and it can be in a fun way. Um, uh, maybe the situation is funny. Uh, the tension actually can be with uh, wife and husband, uh, maybe son and uh, like daughters, fathers and mothers, so um, parents um in like in a more uh, humorous way um so the it's very easy 
to remember, but it's um, the disadvantage of it that you think a little bit in terms of business. So that's one of the disadvantages, I think. Anyway, um, do we have a volunteer for it? Taha, can I go? Sarika here. Yep, Sarika, go ahead. Okay, I would want to pick up the topic. What is the one thing you would most like to change about the world? Yep. At the present time, what we see around is hopelessness and a lot of crisis when it comes to humanity. If I was given a chance for, to change one thing about the world, it would be to hope for people to be more compassionate. The pandemic has caused nothing less than stress in our lives. Everyone in some way or the other has lost something or has lost someone. And at this point on time, if people are not compassionate with each other, the only thing we are increasing among ourselves is friction. To avoid that friction, I would want to suggest, I would want people to be aware of the compassionate gene in their body and to awaken it, not allow it to go dormant. The result would be a very beautiful feeling of a minuscule iota of joy that you're giving it to yourself as an individual and passing it to the community on the whole. Over to Kaha. Thank you. Um, you nailed it. You actually nailed all of the, our frameworks and you using it straightforwardly. Very impressive. Um, um, yeah, I think I need to learn from all of you guys uh, how, to make it, how to answer like that. Uh, we are done with the frameworks, um, cheerful, and I hope you wrote it, jot it down. Uh, it's very helpful. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about the frameworks regarding one of the things I will uh, talk next about that, in expressions and exaggerations topics. Uh, this is one of the things uh, which people forget in table topic, uh, especially in um, particular our club, I know that, and uh, people try to answer um, impromptu, so they have a lot of like things in their mind and don't, they don't think about the expression, um, that this, um, the way they're delivering the speech, which is very, very important. And you know that in the like, typical Toastmasters pathways and like previous manuals, you uh, have like sections when you talk about the body language, voice variety, vocal variety, and all the like helpful stuff to emphasize the speech to make it more expressive. But when we talk in table topic speech, uh, table topic speeches, we tend to forget about that. And that's uh, one of the things which we probably shouldn't. And that's one of the things which makes your speech uh, more interesting. And I think Sarika actually is very good at that. And Praga and uh, uh, all the participants. Uh, and yes, there is some essential expansions, obviously, uh, and it also uh, depends on your style. Uh, some can be humorous. Uh, if person is more like chilling and more like funny, he'll probably tense, uh, he'll probably go with humorous approach and all the answers will be like a little bit uh, with jokes, a little bit of flair thing, a little bit of that and sort of like um, easy lightweighted speeches. Uh, some people like to do inspiring like personal stories um, I think one of our uh, club members actually always delivered uh, an inspiring and personal story in table topic uh, answers, um, which is good, but it can be um, expected after some time. Uh, some use moving stories like touching story. And then remember when I did ice breaking, uh, like not even speech, I was like guest and I think they asked me in table topic something and I provided a touching story about the relationship of my mom and my brother and that won the heart of the, of members. So they remembered me uh, distinctly from that time. 
Um, you can also use the serious approach, and this is usually like facts, uh, vice versa. And the star approach is actually uh, one of the best to use in the serious answers. Um, and it's probably more serious environment, more formal environments. For example, if I'm delivering the speech, even impromptu speech in my uh, working environment, I will probably go with serious expression. And the reason is um, it's not particularly um, acceptable to use other type of uh, approaches because we are very bureaucratic and hierarchical. So uh, we just like, sometimes we're too boring in the, in the job, I think. Anyway, um, that the one thing uh, here, the important thing here for you is that you should find your style, first of all, think about who as a person you and what speeches you like tend to do better and try to put pressure on that first. And then you can try to use different expressions because as I said, there was, there was one guy who always delivered the inspiring answers, tried to deliver the inspiring answers in the table topic session, uh, uh, table topic answers. And it was kind of like at the beginning, like first three times it was, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm inspired, like I'm moving. But on the fourth one, it was like, it doesn't impress you so much as the first three times. So that's why if you try to use different expressions, um, different modes that can uh, make your speeches more like full and more broad. Um, so that's the good way to practice it, of course, as I said, in Toastmasters. And we know the saying Toastmasters wears many hats. So that's, that's the one thing you can practice. So, um, there is another thing as exaggeration, uh, which I want to touch. I want to touch. And exaggeration is like when you remember the story from your life. And some of that thing, story, can be exaggerated, which means you can a little bit adjust it. Uh, for example, in my personal life, when I was a teenager, I broke my both hands. And I can say like something like I broke my both hands. Um, and um, the result of that was I was, uh, couldn't do much and I couldn't eat. Uh, I couldn't like do anything because both my hands were broken. Uh, and here I'm exaggerating because despite my both hands were broken, I still, was able to use them to eat some at least something and to do something. So this is a little bit of exaggeration, right? Uh, I'm saying like, I couldn't do it. Imagine having two hands, you know, cannot do anything at all, even eating. So you can exaggerate something like that. Um, and this is like probably not so well example, but it works well, especially in humor. Um, or like imagining yourself uh, in some situations, uh, maybe funny situations. So uh, you can spice story a little bit. Um, I just don't have a good example for that right now, but I will maybe come up in, in the next answers. So um, anything about essential expressions or exaggerations? Do you have questions? Now we can move on. Okay, let's I move on. some questions in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So I, I have a question like uh, from your personal observations and experience, uh, which of the styles is mostly like chosen by um, speakers and which one is mostly admitted by audience? I mean, like more- um, In the session, usually it's humorous. Um, sure. Yeah, humorous. Uh, people love to laugh, so uh, that's no denial. Um, um, but it sometimes can be like moving or inspiring uh, speeches also. It depends on the speaker. And, but if you are like very serious speaker, uh, play on that first. 
play, uh, I, I would probably advise to go to moving stories when inspiring, when humorous. So maybe after moving stories, try to use like humorous mood, um, but not just straightforwardly polish your humorous skills. First, you have to find your strength. And then based on that, for example, if you're a serious uh, like speaker, uh, first use the frameworks at the beginning, at least try to polish them. And then your answer will be more like structured, more clear. And when you add the strong conclusion, um, you can sometimes even beat humorous speakers. Okay. Like humorous so, you, so you mean humor is a good hook for uh, like yeah. catching your audience? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, humor always works, especially in table topic. Uh, but it's also very tricky because sometimes the audience just don't get it. Okay. And, and you will feel very, very nervous when audience don't get your jokes. Uh, especially in table topic session, you like have one or two jokes in the speech and then you like run out of it and the audience doesn't receive it well and you're like, oh, we didn't get it. And you became nervous and it's like shaking and you forgot what you're talking about. So that's like, um, that's why I advise to start from what your strengths are and just practice the basics and then move to the next level. Uh, uh, yeah. This is one of the hardest things to master if you're not like natural. Yep. Kaha, thank you very much. Uh, I ask this because, uh, you know, sense of humor is uh, something that uh, does yeah. not belong to everyone. And uh, when you do impromptu speech, maybe you you are a bit nervous and you will not uh, remember or recall some some jokes or something. <laughs> so yes, yes, that's why I'm saying like first build up your strengths, then move to the next level. And actually, if you, I don't know the current manual of, uh, on the humorous speeches, but I did humorous speaking manual uh, in an uh, old track. And it's, 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 it's very challenging um, because even in normal speech, I include like 10 to 15 jokes in the speech. And like on the half of them gets through audience in your way. And especially if the first two ones not go well, you became very nervous because you, you're like, you're not receiving reaction you expected to. And that makes you very uncomfortable. And it's, it's like, it's a huge challenge. And I also advise you like to write jokes before, like where is the list behind the manual, which all dedicated to like write jokes like, here. And it's like, you know, the people who deliver the humorous speeches, they actually have some jokes prepared in advance. And it's like the, how we call it, stand up. Um, they, they prepare it in advance and they practice it a lot. So that's, that's the whole art behind it. Okay, uh, let's move to the next. Uh, next. I have one question regarding body movements. Yep. Is, yep. is it better to stand up when speaking or sit down or it doesn't matter? Uh, are we talking about uh, online or offline? Yes, online. Online, I think it's better to be comfortable. Like as soon, because the one advantage of online, you can feel more comfortable. Uh, but this advantage is you not do not see the audience reactions always, even like in the video. Uh, it's not always easy to catch it. So uh, and because of that, you can be more nervous. And if you're standing and you're feeling uncomfortable when you're standing, maybe it makes you even more nervous. So I would say like. Go with the way you're comfortable with. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think standing like in the in stage offline is completely different skill than doing online. Mm -hmm. I don't think standing in online will help you. Well, it actually will help you to become more better and more nervous controlling uh, when you date on the stage. Um, but I think when you're sitting and comfortable in online meetings, you look better uh, mm -hmm. because you're not, your mind is not like thinking about something else. And when you're standing, it's clearly seen. And usually you're far away from the screen. So people do not see your eye contact and some maybe body movements became like abrupt with the video connection. Like I'm doing, you see, you don't see my hands, but I'm shaking them. And this is like, uh, even <laughs> sitting here, yeah? Something is happening. And imagine standing up behind and something losing and your body language is not going through. And you see that and you're like, oh, this is not going well. So when you're sitting, at least you're not like 
too much concerned about that. So it's more about the visual uh, delivery. Uh, everything that distracting uh, from the speech tends to not go well in online. Like when people listen to you and see you and something goes wrong, they like, they notice it straightforwardly. In the settings of the big audience, they look around, uh, there is no like technical problems with that. So it's it's different situations. So yeah, that's that's the, the reason behind. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? To do, to do. Okay, let's practice. Um, before we practice, I think actually quite good on time. Yes, we're good on time. We have time to practice. Um, and yeah, there are a few examples we can practice on. And I wanted to uh, just give you one more thing. And oops, this is external resources. Um, regarding the thing we talked about just recently, like the expressions and exaggerations. Um, I want to give you two examples in the question and I will try to deliver that difference. Um, so I would go, if you could ask one person alive or dead, only one question, who would you ask and what would you ask? Um, the first one without expressions, but probably with framework. Um, I always admired Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and um, I knew a little bit of history and because he was, uh, he was actually, uh, it's, it's written uh, in like in documents. He was a great uh, public speaker and he was always one of the things about him, uh, about his height. Uh, he, like no matter where are you and with whom you are, Abraham Lincoln tends to be one head higher than anyone else. Uh, like it's just like something about him. Uh, but it's also, um, like one of the greatest mind I think ever lived in uh, history. Uh, he was um, very smart and I think uh, I will ask him only one question and if it, if it will be like possible, I would ask, ask him when he was passing away and just one question does he regret about something in his life? That will be my uh, question to him. And the reasoning behind it is because he had a um, very like, prominent life, but also his wife suffered from illness and he lost his son, I believe, very early and it was probably tragic for him. And um, the, his wife was like, uh, I think, uh, like documentary, she, she was very ill and she was uh, making a lot of uh, like stuff which definitely would interrupt his work. And I wanted to ask him, like, will he regret any of part of his life and something he would change? Um, it's just like unbelievable how he managed all of that. Um, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to ask him that. So this is like, uh, I don't know, I use structure or not. I tried, but probably it was not so well. Uh, this was without expression uh, and exaggerations. And if we'll try to use that expression, if an exaggeration, if you could ask a one person live or dead on one question, who would you ask and what would you ask? Uh, because I like to, I want to believe I'm more humorous guy, like style, humorous style guy. I would probably go with the answer Grigori get and um, the, the person I would talk with would definitely be me probably in the future, um, maybe 10, 20 years from now. Um, and uh, the question I would ask him 
was would be very tricky um, and very simple actually. I would just ask him ask one, only one, and one question, and it would be why. And I would leave from, probably from with that question. Um, I hope he will be stumbled and do, did, do not understand what's going on. So basically I was trying to, uh, what here? I'm trying to, to make him think about what happened and why it happened and having no clue about what I'm referring to. So this is what the question, that question I would ask. So I would try to use exaggeration, maybe in some expression. If I don't know it well or not, it's really hard actually to practice it. Okay, um, so three more questions. Anyone want to practice? Melanie or Melanie? I, I, Melanie, is that right? Are you able to answer us? Oh. Lazat, are you able to answer? Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah. Uh, glad to see you, everybody. Um, um, so um, I would like question. If you look into the heart of your enemy, what do you think you would find that is different from what is your is in your own heart? Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, just <laughs> I. <laughs> I, uh, I, my, I seem to me that uh, this is much easier. So I like this question. I would better answer this question. Okay. Um, uh, what I think um, about about my enemy? Yes. Uh, so. Um, uh, so. Uh, about my enemy is uh, if this past is will be maybe my true enemy uh, and uh, person I seem uh, like seem to me a threat, then uh, they probably think of me as an enemy too. So uh, I would say to him uh, that um, I'm sure uh, uh, that. Um, I said to him that uh, I'm. I don't care about him, and I uh, live <laughs> live my own life, and I I don't uh, want to hurt him, and and I don't think that. Um, uh, uh, so I wish I I would, I I would say that I wish him luck and happy happiness in life, and so I think it's no. Uh, no sense to have uh, uh, enemies because it is it uh, brings no good for you and uh, I like we you must come along uh, even with your uh, enemies so um, mm -hmm. so um, yes I had I have uh, actual actually enemies but uh, I think I am fr friendly person so. Uh, but um, I I uh, I have positive uh, relation to my enemies, so um, I would I would try to uh, to uh, build better real, uh, relation with my enemy, and so uh, I try I I try to. Uh, uh, to change my relation to enemy and tr uh, try to change uh, his opinion about me. So mm -hmm. I said to him. Um... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that was a good conclusion, actually. So you know. Yes, I I, I would say him uh, my uh bit some much pretty words. Uh, so uh, I. I would say him that it's no sense to be enemies. Uh, let, uh, so, so let's play with your friends. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, you will be friends with your enemy. Um, yes. That's, um, that's a good. That's a good advice, actually. Yes. Okay. Uh, Karina, I see you raised your hand. Do you want to go to answer any question? Yes, uh, I would like to answer the first question. If you had the chance to go back in time and change one thing, what what you do it? Would you do it? Um, yes, if I had a chance uh, to to go back um, in time, I would change. Um, um, I would change one thing. When I was in my early twenties, uh, after graduating my bachelor degree, I pursued my dream and my goal to um, to continue um, mm -hmm. to continue my education and to um, to have a master. And I applied for a master degree in France, and uh, I obtained a scholarship. And um, at that time, um, I just I had a um, I had a choice whether to go and to study or to um, to work. And uh, I choose to. Um, I got a job at that time, and uh, uh, I. Um, Karina? Oh, yes, Anything sorry, my okay. connection. And uh, I decided to, um, to pursue a career. And so um, uh, currently, um, I don't have time to, um, uh, to study and to dedicate my time for studies. So I um, came to a conclusion that um, when you are um, in your like twenties, um, you should um, complete all your studies. Uh, at the right at the right time, at the right moment. So I would change, I would change that. And, uh, and that's it. Okay, good, good. Azamat, I see you raising hand and I'm very glad that you are joining us. Yep, Azamat, go ahead. Uh, well, thank you very much for your kind words. I also wanted to answer for the first question. Uh, like, if you had the chance to go back and change one thing, would you do it? So like, uh, Whenever people are talking about changes, uh, they're actually asking uh, whether you are satisfied with the current situation. Like, uh, if some or is there something that dissatisfies you? Because when you're uh, talking about change, you're actually implying that uh, change should be for the better. So it it's been customary, and I've often uh, heard this kind of opinion that about changing thing in your past or something like that, going back to that or uh, that I don't want to change it. Like people speaking this uh, wise tone, like I don't want to change anything. I have no regrets regarding my mistakes and like these mistakes made me who I am and the rest and the rest and so on and so on. Uh, but I this time I won't be this kind of uh, wise person. I will be my regretful, foolish self. And I will say that, yes, I will definitely change some of the things that uh, happened in my past. So, because that would probably with high probability would make my current life a bit better than currently it is. So uh, whenever uh, people are talking about change, I'm always for the changes. And uh, because uh, you can always improve things and uh, uh, there is always a, space for improvements to be made in, in your life or in the world, or in your work, on your family and so on and so on and so on. Because whenever we are uh, standing still, whenever we don't want the changes, uh, we become stagnated, we will stagnate and we eventually, we will probably, that's when the life ends. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Azama, did you try to use any framework we covered today? 
Unfortunately, I've joined <laughs> very late in the into the master class, so I've missed most of those things. So I apologize if I didn't use any of those. No, no, no. I'm just asking if you if you tried to use it or not. And I, I did try to use probably the uh, like the introduction uh, cons, pros and cons things probably. So yeah, yeah. maybe I, maybe this one I tried to use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. You have that in mind. I'm just curious if you have in mind when you. Answering and the reason I'm asking is like thinking like was it useful to you also or not guys so that's that's like my my concern here. Um, okay, does anyone else want to practice? Taha, can I practice? Yes, of course, Yeah. No, I, I actually would want to practice on the second question because I have been thinking about it for the last five ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, good, if you good. look. <laughs> If you looked into the heart of your enemy, what do you think you would find that is different from what is in your own heart? The basic definition of enemy would be someone who basically have a feeling of jealousy or, um, uh, how should I put it, jealousy or indifference towards you. If I had one opportunity to look into the heart of my enemy, I would want to look at why is my enemy either jealous or indifferent to me? Is it my attitude? Is it my skill? Is it my plain, uh, plain need, stupidity and idiosyncrasies which put the seed of enmity between him, her and me? My heart, if I look at, is I am a kind of a person who would just let it go. There might be episodes where I feel sad for something that happened in my past life, but I would eventually learn how to let it go. Now, if someone is my enemy, I would want to peep into their heart and see why are they held bound on uh, why are they held bound on holding on to that one incident because of which the enmity continues? Over to Kaha. Okay, that's great. Um, I just love how you use the, the structure and you give the uh, answer. It's very structured. You always have the conclusion, introduction, and you always provide examples um, to your any of your points, which is which is brilliant. I just admire it. Um, praise to you. Kudos to you. Um, Thank you. Uh, do, do, do we have anyone else to volunteer? Dana, you didn't speak today at all. Dana doesn't want to speak to us. Okay. Um, May I volunteer? Yeah, yeah, of course, go ahead. Okay, so I would like to answer the last question, the fourth question. If you could go back in time and tell a younger version of yourself one thing, what would you tell? So, to be honest, I don't want to go too uh, far. I just want to go to very close uh, past, uh, two months ago. Mm, okay, some background about me. I'm a student and uh, at the moment I have a lot of assignments to do because I'm a very great procrastinator. So, I, I just would like to go two months ago and just tell myself that if you start doing your assignment right now, you will enjoy sunny May days. But unfortunately, I'm not enjoying them. I'm sitting at home with a lot of assignments. So thank you. <laughs> okay, that, that, was, that is the humor we talked about. Um, Self-depreciation depreciation was always uh, one of the things which works well for humor. Um, uh, and we all been in that shoes of procrastinating. Karina, are you still raising your hand or is it you want to go again? Or is it from previous time? Yes, it was from previous time, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I was thinking maybe you raised it again, so and I'm not giving you opportunity to speak. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, so yeah, I think um, we're actually pretty close to finish. And uh, yeah, before we finish, uh, I just want to ask you if you do have any questions to me or anything at all. Uh, we can just talk right now, like Q&A. Um, yeah. I, I just want to ask, um, is it my voice? Um, you can hear my voice clearly or just so-so? 
No, we can hear you clearly. Uh, yeah. No problem. No problem. There is some noise in the background, but it's manageable. No worries. Okay, uh, I will shut my windows. Okay, I'll shut my windows and doors so it will be. But do you have a question? Uh, uh, that's only my question. Thank you. Okay, okay, good. Um, yeah, before we jump uh, to the QA and probably to spark it a little bit, I want to add a few things which I noticed during our answers. And thanks to our um, guest, uh, we had pretty experienced table topic speakers, especially at the beginning with uh, Zalki Fire, I think, and Praga, which delivered brilliant answers. And the one thing I particularly noticed about that, not delivering only the structure that you saw, obviously, the structure of them. They had very strong conclusion. They used the pauses between delivering the conclusion. I think uh, Sarika did that too. Uh, I think Angela, you did that too. So uh, there is a slight pause between delivering the conclusion and the voice kind of changed when they delivered the conclusion. They make it either a little bit louder or more different, like emphasizing the particular word they want. So this is like the expression I was talking about earlier. The expression and exaggeration. Um, you just emphasize the word you want to like make an impression. Uh, that's a big advantage of having that in your speech. Uh, yeah, and but before you came to that level, that always should be basic. And what we mostly cover today is what was the frameworks, and that could help you to not think about. What are you going to speak about it? Uh, not even what, but how to speak about that. So first came to, my, to your mind when you see the question, you have an answer. You probably have an example in the story. Oh, I have that story and it's good to talk. Uh, and it's good to talk about that in the table topic session. And you're ready to go. And when you deliver your story and just like suddenly lost in your story. And for that, this frameworks will help you to like, to start from somewhere like, what, who, where, when, and where, all like uh, introduction, pros and cons, and conclusion, all just situation, tension, action, and resolve. Uh, so whatever you choose, uh, whatever is easier to you, you can try it in different uh, table topic sessions or maybe different occasions and practice it and see whatever closer to you. Uh, maybe some questions go well with some frameworks or maybe some frameworks frameworks go well with you. So uh, just pick one of them and try to practice. Then pick an O and try to practice. And when you're comfortable with that, uh, next step is definitely think about your expressions, um, how you can make it even more stronger. Because uh, that's a part that can make you a great speaker. And this is particularly practical for our people when they deliver the toasts. Because at any point in our life, we will deliver the toast on a special occasions. Um, so I think uh, if you practice table topic and prompt speeches, uh, you become uh, very good at that. And this can go a long way in your life. Um, but first, there should be basics. Like if you have a structure of your speech, it always be at least clear what you're trying to say to the audience, what you're trying to convey, what is your message. And after that, to make it even more stronger, you can use expression, exaggerations, and other techniques, um, which will also help tremendously. Uh, basics first, expressions next. Um, that's one of the biggest takeaway I wanted to have you from this session. But other than that, we are done. And there are some resources here to you to use. And it's basically, you can Google them. And um, it's just frameworks mostly I use here. So uh, that's it for our masterclass. And if you have any questions, any questions at all, I am here to answer uh, that. I, ha I have one question. Sure, go ahead. Um, actually, I have one problem. 
uh, when I have to speak impromptu, sometimes it's like mm, nothing in my head, you know, like blank shit. Mm -hmm. And um, as you said, you have examples, you can just put examples. Um, but uh, when I uh, need to speak impromptu, mm -hmm. like, I don't remember these examples, anything. Maybe it's maybe it's because I'm excited, you know, it's, um, um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, what, do you, what do you recommend? Like, so, yeah, um, to, to prepare in advance or what? Um, yes, but this is a broad to speeches. Well, the preparation in advance and table talk sessions, usually they depend on theme of the day, topic of the day. So you can kind of predict what will be topic and you can think about the stories can be related to that. And the other thing is, um, if you have no clue what will it gonna be, and you just like came and then, one of the advices I had early in my days is that take a stand against the question. Like if the question is saying like, um, what is like better mountain, so see, you just like say, inside in your head, I don't like both. And you gave the arguments for that. So this is the easiest like um, answer to come up. I think it's actually on IELTS advice, on the says, and I just adjusted it. Because if you're blank and you don't think about anything else, you just like say like, I don't like that. And I'm absolutely against that. And when you against and you neglect something new, I don't know, it's the brain trick or what, you kind of find good reason for that. Or like the reasoning came to you, like why you don't like that. And you like, uh, because of that, that, and that, and that. it's already a structure in your head, why you don't like it. Um, and, uh, and you just need to like deliver it. Just take a stand against that particular message or like question. Um, and the reasoning behind the examples behind will come to you uh, easily because your our brain is tend is tend to work in that way. Like if you were taking a stand against something, our brain somehow works better to provide you with examples so to support your opinion or to you like advantage. Is that helpful, Karina? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for the masterclass and useful tips. Yeah, everything is recorded. <laughs> and I think it will be helpful for future. Thanks. Any other questions, guys? Saha, I have one question. Uh, yep. in, in case there is no video, I mean, there is some internet problem. Uh, is it advisable? to switch off the video or uh, it, it's like switching on my video will add bonus points as in not bonus points in points but you know kind of creating an impression on the judges oh i think definitely video in the contest uh video only like it, like connection is bad video um, okay. because it's just like i don't know how to describe him in it but um not being contestant. I mean, like it's okay in a table topic session, but I think our club does not allow that. You have to switch on your camera. Um, All right. Okay. But in the context, definitely, definitely switch on cameras, even in bad connection. It's just. Mm -hmm. um, I think the solution for uh, this situation, what we do is, if someone has bad connection, as as much as possible, people turn on turn off their cameras, to decrease the tension on the connection of that one person so they can safely have their own uh, yeah. oh. camera on so maybe yeah. we okay. can do so, that yeah, I think yeah only the, the speaker be... switches on their camera and the remaining people switches that off yeah yeah yes yeah. yes ah, okay. i think okay. that will be exactly happening in a contest i think okay. everyone will switch off the cameras except the speakers uh, all right okay yeah done done, done. Thank you so much, Kaha. It was a very beautiful uh, session. I absolutely introspected the entire session 
and um, I, I love table topics, but your session basically helped me categorize my strengths and my structure and to think in a focused mind. Yeah, uh, I think you're a brilliant table topic speaker. You just, uh, and the way you speak, the uh, way you, you talk and deliver that, I, I love it. And I learned a lot from you as well. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kana. Thank you. Um, any other questions, guys? Yeah, I have a, a first. Um, I want to express my appreciation uh, for today's uh, masterclass. That was really interesting one for me. And uh, I have uh, just maybe general question uh, related to the Toastmasters uh, Club. Uh, so Astana is an international Toastmasters Club, right? Uh, yeah. here, uh, so what does this mean international? Like you have a connection with other clubs or uh, here uh, just recently I um, signed uh, to the Bristol Toastmasters Club and I don't know whether they're international or not. Uh, so uh, how do you define this? So the organization is called Toastmasters International and they have like more than 350 clubs around the world. Any Toastmasters Club probably official if they are registered. Um, if they not, um, they usually try to register as, uh, as much as possible, as fast as possible because the materials are there and it's um, there are over like tasks for the members to help uh, clubs to register. Uh, so you have so some- It works actually, but there's no big organization as like big, big, big club as Toastmaster, big mm -hmm. club. There is clubs around the world. Okay. Usually they have like from 20 to 60 people, sometimes smaller, sometimes bigger, but oh. at least 20 people. Um, but uh, yeah, in the beginning of your speech, sorry for interruption, you mentioned that you were in Chicago or somewhere. Yeah. Or so, Fox. but where is the headquarter? Like in our organization, for example, Google. Google has office in California, main office, mm -hmm. but it also has office in Moscow, uh, yeah. Russia, uh, or Kazakhstan, I mean, like any other countries, right? So it's like big international organization spread around the world. So they had the headquarters in Colorado. They used mm -hmm. to be in California. Um, and the headquarter is like three or four floor building. Mm -hmm. uh, I think from the second floor, it belongs, uh, like the building that itself belongs to Tosmas International, but they take like second and third floor, I think. And the first floor is actually, um, uh, rented to okay. uh, make less expenses, so which is like actually good because so, we pay money as a membership for that. Uh, so uh, Kaha, big office, not so big office, but office. Kaha, as far as I understood, Toastmaster is not just a hobby for people. It's a kind of uh, kind of uh, hobby, or what is it? Just, just uh, I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> it's a club. It's a place where you can grow as a public speaker and leader. Um, and additionally, as a, for Aston Atlas Masters, I can say that it's uh, people where you meet a lot of young, interesting, um, bright people, very active. I mean, like, look at us, we're organizing some master classes. So we are doing some, mm -hmm. I think picnic is coming for new officers. Uh, there are a lot of type of events and, um, and community around that. Uh, the club is itself a community. Uh, okay. and I think I visited different clubs. Uh, not all of them like have as tight community as Astronautos Masters Club, but they, some of them do. Uh, for example, I visited two clubs in uh, Boston area, and I went with one because the, uh, I just like it more, and it was more like felt like ATC club because they have social hours, they have like once a month go to like have a dinner together, uh, some activities together. So that's like, uh, it's all depend on the club. Uh, some clubs are more active in terms of that, some are less. But the main thing of the clubs is usually practice uh, in the meetings. And I think Praga wants to add something. Yeah, uh, hi, Kaha. I just uh, have a few curious about the contest thing. So as uh, Kazakh told me that uh, you guys are not registered under an area or a district. So yeah, um, yeah, is yeah. this an, yeah. 
so is this an uh, official toastmaster club contest or is it an uh, kind of an informal contest uh, yeah it's i think it's informal uh we do not have a rights to like post formal because we're not this different on British. right okay okay so yeah so the winners uh, from your club they don't go to any other area or any other contest yeah yeah that's that's particular too we tried uh, to join um some division i don't know what's happening there um, but remember we tried to organize area clubs in kazakhstan and then join area it didn't work as well so we're still in the process of getting right there. right in pandemic pandemic changed plans yeah you know you you have you must have gone completely online now yeah so it's, it's okay it's, uh, and uh, just a small thing uh, if i can add uh, to clear dinara's query on yeah. what is toastmasters so dinara if you're okay i would like to answer this thing as i do work for pr in my division so toastmaster is basically one kind of an organization which has different clubs to it around like what um, thousands and thousands of club and uh, it is like across 45 nations now so what it does is when you're at the club level it gives you two opportunities first is uh, you become a member you take uh, roles in the meetings and uh, you learn through that you deliver speeches over there on different pathways there are 11 pathways that it offers you right so you deliver speeches according to which area you want to learn from then it gives you an opportunity of your leadership development which is basically about you take ec roles you take about uh, division and district roles you become area directors and things like that you also have an opportunity to become a distinguished toastmaster which is a very official degree which a lot of people use for their corporate um, you know areas and other things but that has a long process you have to uh, be like really really <laughs> dedicated to a toastmaster for that but all in all if it is not only a you know an informal organization it is a lot formal it has contests it has it has and all the more when you go to uh, for your jobs you can use uh, the people you know from that as your referrals they it becomes as a community so that is something which you uh, you can learn from toastmaster that is something which i have learned if i i would like to add and if you if you want to have a kind of a career in public speaking you can develop from there you get a lot of contacts and achievement awards different kind of achievement awards in there so it's all official which comes from toastmasters and uh, if you want to learn more maybe you can go to toastmasters uh, uh, international organization website which tells you a lot about what and how you can develop in a toastmaster right so it will it will not only help you in your uh, communication skills and leadership skills but it works a lot on networking like oh, now you. if i have to, sorry yeah so thank that's you. how you can develop on it okay okay thanks a lot for sharing yeah thank you yeah uh, i just googled the uh, number of toastmasters club in 15900 almost 60000 clubs so this is pretty much impressive uh, and I say 300, I don't know why I say 300. I think it's uh, 345,000 members, right? In so the now the latest uh, update to Kaha is around 364,000 uh, some hundreds. So yeah. that's the latest number yeah. for those masters. Yeah, usually uh, when I travel, uh, I usually Google uh, those masters club and go there and join there. And it's like everywhere I was, like in India, in US, obviously, I think in Canada, and I joined in one in France. Are you on so, the Telegram group? Uh, the Telegram group is also there, right? To take different I'm roles not, across clubs I'm and all. Not as active now as I achieve my distinguished master level. Like, okay, I am done. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, but it was an amazing session, Kaha. I I must say, uh, if I have to, uh, you know. If I have to add something new to it, which I recently learned from one of the sessions, you can you can add that in your session next time. Is that uh, it is also about uh, the five different types of speakers and how you can grow on your particular type in an impromptu speaking. Yeah. So that's uh, that's I a. If you have yeah. a link for that, I would love to. Uh, uh, it, it's not a link, actually. It is something which I uh, just learned from one of the education sessions. 
um and uh, okay. it's, it's something really really amazing which i felt so there are, you know there are people who would be more on data statistical kind of a people there'll be more on there'll be few people who would always refer to things uh when they are speaking there'll be people who will always talk about pros and cons so this way there are like five uh, yeah. different aspects of people and if you are one of a reference person you should make that segment of yours strong so that you can speak on any topic with a reference to a thing yeah uh, actually we talked about that just uh, yeah. uh you are like you have a connection issue as well i talked about yeah, that maybe. Uh, choose your style and find your style about like maybe you are good with that from a particular or maybe other type is yeah, yeah. <laughs> not uh, also kaha if you can please 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 share the the um, you know the presentation on the group also it will be a great help for all of us yeah we will definitely go that. through yeah uh, don't worry about that yeah definitely i was about to do that um and um yeah i wanted to say thank you for your answers i actually learned from you a lot as well and i use the example that when you master the structure you can go like frag and uh, uh to, like, thank you so much to give, like <laughs> conclusions and like make it even strong yeah that was brilliant to that thank you thank you for that thank you so much uh okay guys i think that's all um Thank you very much for participation and um, I wish you luck in your endeavors and for contestant participants. Um, go, 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 go for it. I would love to see it and I think it will be brilliant. Um, I'm excited about this session uh, contest. Okay, guys, have a good rest of the day and we will see you in the contest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. Okay.